Oh, ah. oh, it's so cold. Sorry, that was actually a non-alcoholic beer. I just did that to illustrate that, yeah, I used to be cool. I used to be able to friggin' party, dude. Until, right before I turned 37, I was diagnosed with atrial fibrillation. If you have no idea what that is, like I didn't, I'll let this doctor explain it to you. When people have atrial fibrillation, the top chambers of the heart quiver instead of beating regularly. And that causes a less effective pumping function of the heart. Now, Melanie has a condition called atrial fibrillation, or AFib. At any time, her heart can start racing, and during one episode, it went up to 300 beats per minute. For years, I would get dizzy when I stood up, or I felt like I was gonna faint when I walked up a flight of stairs, or sometimes I would feel like my heart was beating a million beats per minute. And for years, I had no idea what was causing it. Eventually, I wound up at this hospital for almost a week. I had to get a heart surgery, which was called an ablation, where they make two incisions in your groin, and then they send tools up through your arteries to your heart, and then burn the parts of your heart that are misfiring. Fun stuff, I know. I had done a bunch of research about AFib, trying to figure out what I needed to do to stave it off. And it turns out things can trigger it or make it worse. And the number one trigger? Alcohol. So when the cardiologist told me that I had AFib, as it's also called, basically all the advice in the medical field said to stop drinking. After I had the obvious existential panic that I'm sure comes with any medical diagnosis, I was like, so wait a second, no drinking? Like, ever? I like drinking. I like good wine and beer, and living in New York, a lot of social activities involve the consumption of alcohol. It was just something that I took for granted. So I wondered, what would my social life look like without alcohol? Would I become some sort of lame narc? I should add that I wasn't some sort of like party animal or anything. In truth, I love nothing more than going to bed at 10 p.m. But when I make plans with a friend, I'm not really in the habit of being like, hey, wanna grab a Sprite and catch up? But if the choice was between $14 Mezcal cocktails and a functioning cardiovascular system, it kind of seemed like a no-brainer. So the day that I got the diagnosis, I stopped drinking. That night I went out to eat and I ordered a $3 spin drift instead of a drink. I have to admit that it was a little bit weird at the beginning. I had to kind of recalibrate my brain to be like, okay, I'm gonna have a LaCroix with this burger instead of a beer. What was actually surprising was that for me, the hard part of not drinking hasn't actually been the not drinking. It's been navigating not drinking around other people. After I stopped drinking, there came to be this one specific instance that I began to dread. When you show up at a party or somebody's house for dinner or whatever, and after everybody's settled, etc., somebody goes, hey, do you want a drink? It might all be in my head, but the no has become so loaded in my mind. If people are used to you drinking, when all of a sudden you say no, you don't want a drink, I think that we as a culture are conditioned to imbue that with some sort of meaning, as if something is suddenly wrong. It's like Truman breaking out of the scripted routine. And I have to imagine that it's tenfold for women who probably can't turn down a drink without everyone assuming that they're pregnant. But the weird thing is, it's not this way with anything else. Like, if somebody offers you a bowl of guacamole and you say, no, thank you, the person's not gonna say, oh, are you not eating guacamole right now? A lot of this is probably in my head. When I first started not drinking, I was really, really self-conscious. And I still can be. But as I ventured further into the world of not drinking, I sort of realized that the tide is shifting a little bit. I came to realize that 40% of the US population doesn't drink which is actually up from 35% in 2019. That sort of shocked me since I basically assumed that everyone drank, but that's not actually the case. I think that the pandemic had a lot to do with that. Being cooped up inside and the insane stress of living through a literal plague caused a lot of us, myself included, to drink more than we are normally accustomed to. And I know that it ended up causing a lot of people to reevaluate their relationship to drinking. Another realization that I had was a big part of drinking for me was ritual. I like the act of putting on a movie and opening a bottle of wine, or clocking off of work and cracking open a beer. 
So when I stopped opening a bottle of red wine at night, I wanted to see if there was something that I could replace it with that wasn't incredibly boring. I was a little bit hesitant though. Growing up in Minnesota, lurking in musty garage refrigerators was something called 3-2 beer, or near beer, which is a weird, gross holdover from the state's antiquated blue laws that's usually skunky and disgusting and harder to get drunk on since it's only 3.2% alcohol. Thankfully, things have changed a lot. Now when you go to a grocery store or beer store, there's at least a few different options. This Whole Foods has 13 different non-alcoholic beer options. And brands like Athletic Brewing make non-alcoholic beer that, I'm not kidding when I say, and this is not sponsored, tastes basically as good as regular beer. My neighborhood in Brooklyn even has a non-alcoholic liquor store. So not drinking ain't what it used to be, but not everybody seems to be comfortable with that change. The New York Times did an article about that non-alcoholic liquor store, and the comment section is filled with people who cannot fathom the idea of a store that sells non-alcoholic beverages. This is just as idiotic as folks spending $20 for a fancy cocktail. These alcohol-free beverages sound like a ripoff. Then what's the point? Pepsi is cheaper and easier to find. I feel like I'm reading the last cries of a civilization as it goes over the existential cliff. You might be one of these people thinking, non-alcoholic liquor store? Fake beer? What's the point? Is it beer? Yeah, with no alcohol. But if you drink enough and if you drink a lot, they get you up. No, there's no alcohol. That's Boy. Well, I am here to report to you that not drinking can be very awkward. I didn't realize it before I stopped, but not drinking at a party can be weird as hell and not very fun. John Mulaney has a great bit about it. Like, I'll show up at a party and they'll be like, hey, everybody, all right, we got Coronas in the fridge, and oh, hey, Mulaney, would you like, like, an old turnip that we found in a cabinet? <laughs> would that be good for you? Would you like that? I know you don't drink. So yeah, it can be more comfortable if you have something to drink in lieu of alcohol. There's also Liquid Death, which is just canned water, but it comes in cans that are designed to look like beer and offer a cover of sorts to people who maybe don't wanna make a big deal out of the fact that they're not drinking at a party. I stopped drinking only a few months ago, so I haven't really had to face any serious trials like big parties or weddings, etc. But I know that I will eventually, and I'm honestly not that worried about it. There might be a few awkward moments when I'm first telling people that I'm not drinking, but I really don't think most people give a shit. I know in the past I wasn't bothered when friends told me they had stopped drinking. After all, I was interested in hanging out with them, not having somebody to drink with. So do I miss drinking? Honestly, not really. Every once in a while I will see somebody in a movie drinking a cold glass of white wine and I'll think, hmm, that looks refreshing. Or I'll look at the bottle of Mezcal I bought the day before I was diagnosed with AFib and think it might be nice to be able to sip it. And look, I'm not gonna become one of those people that evangelizes giving up drinking. I get it, drinking is fun. I also don't eat meat, but as anybody who's ever gone to dinner with me can attest, I'm the person that gets most excited whenever they bring out a delicious real meat burger. But at the same time, I've also been confronted by the astonishingly banal realization that I actually feel better when I don't drink which is a real 37-year-old thing to say. But then again, who says a 37-year-old can't still party?